Hey, welcome back to the print house, guys. I figured I'd do a follow-up video to the UFO printer. This is the UFO U3. It's the uh, larger one, um, UV. And I got this from Waldo2413. Link will be in the description. And I figure I'd do a little show-and-tell video um, that I didn't give up on this printer. I've had people ask me what, I ha what happened to it. And I'm you know, happy to say that I got it printing today. Not today, but I've got it printing, and today I'm doing a video for it. Um, so when I got it, um, I had to, it was in very, very, very bad shape. Um, the ink was still in it when he shipped it, so it got everywhere. The coating strip was full of ink. It was out of whack, had to be adjusted. The cap station had to be adjusted. Everything had to be gone over it, and it was filthy. And as you can see, it's not so bad, okay? And then the other task was getting the ink to, to flow through the system, um, through the ink heads, because... You know, who knows if the ink was dried up. Well, good thing about UV, it doesn't really dry up until UV light hits it. So um, I think that it, it had that going for it. So when I got it, I had to adjust the encoding strip, clean everything, buy fresh ink, um, and uh, clean it up completely. Guys, there was so much ink on this thing. The pictures, just check them out here. Um, terrible. So um, after getting it uh, ran, what I did was I ran, I, I used the suction, I pulled ink through every dampener on the ink head. So you got two whites that come out, two lines that come out of the white. I was able to draw white ink out of one of the lines, but not the other. So I need a new dampener. So out of the six dampeners, only one is bad from the white. So I'm going to order that, right? Okay. And then the test print shows that I'm missing yellow. Okay. So the print head itself is printing the other colors, not the greatest but it is printing my goal was to get ink coming through that's all my goal was so i'm going to order an ink head a print head for it and i'm going to start from scratch after i get that um i had to adjust the capping station that's fine it's it's draining from there um but there's still some work i gotta do on the motor that's that, that sucks it all out so as of now it's running um the other hurdle was this acro rip that the uh Chinese distributors sell with it or give with it is uh, not fun to install. I mean, you literally have to like turn off firewalls and uh, virus scans on everything so it'll run. Um, it comes with a dongle. I don't know if it's a legit dongle. I don't know. I got the dongle. It's in there. So it's Acro, the Acro Rip 9.03 or whatever. So I'm running that on this computer because I don't run. Uh, I run a separate computer for every printer, basically, except the this computer runs my latex and my Roland, okay? Because those have legit software, whatever. Um, I have another ThinkPad or laptop under there that runs the DTG. So all four of these here. That touchscreen one runs the latex over here, so that's separate. All right, so anyways, got the AcroRip set up. I, I got really good, dense quality ink. Um, to come down real dark, I, I know how to adjust the ink, the profiles, the brightness, and um, yeah, so I mean, I've, I'm able to get going. So I'm going to go ahead and start this print, and um, it's a large yin yang. Um, again, there'll be no yellow on here, but it is getting nice because you got to get really close on the head when you adjust it. It's got a sensor, but you can just dis disengage that. But you got to get really close to the to the platen to get a good solid quality print, and you'll see that I do have that. So I'll go ahead and start this. Again, this is Acro Rep that comes with it. This is um, 1440 by 1440. So it'll be a little slower process, but it'll let you see how crisp the quality is. And playing with the rip settings, I'm able to get a nice dark print. In the beginning, it was a very, very light print, and I thought that was the characteristics of the UV ink. But it turns out, if you play with the color profiles, you get the, the brightnesses, the contrast right, you can get really good, dense colors. So um, it's loading up the file now. It's, it's, it's a rather large file. Um, the, I've had no crashes with the AcroRip program, um, but when I left the printer on, obviously leave it on, I run a couple prints, it got kind of haywire. I turned off the printer, turned back on, it was fine. So it's gonna automatically start up now. As you see, the, the UV LED light will come on. 
and then it's gonna go ahead and start printing, guys. So this is 1440 by 1440, a yin yang, and um, I'll zoom in a little bit here. I'll leave that on, and I'll let that go. This has the single, if you notice, the single LED on one side. It does not have LED on this side. So they say, try to keep your images off this edge because the UV LED might not cure it right here. Not sure how much. So um, there's about, you can see it's starting to come in now. There was about a half inch of empty space there in the file. So, uh, but this file right here, it's about seven inches diameter, roughly, for this photo that you see printing now. Um, I'll go ahead and speed this up so it won't bore you, and then I'll zoom in every once in a while just to show you, but, um, and then I'll tell you about how long it takes to print. So... From this point on here, we're at 6 minutes, 20 seconds. So I'll go ahead and sp speed this up. All right, I'm back, guys. So you've seen that fast-forward video right there was from 6 minutes to 12 minutes and 43 seconds. So uh, just over 6 minutes. Remember, this is the highest resolution, 1440 by 1440. So um, as you'll see in a second, the colors are real crisp and dense. Again, you got to make sure this table is flat. I've noticed it is crooked, and you got to have that head all the way down. And you do have height sensors that detect. You can turn them off or leave them on. But they get annoying because they beep. So um, obviously it hasn't beeped through this time. Um, all in all, I think it's a great printer. It, there's a, they've done a great job um, putting it together for what it is. Um, the print quality is really good. I can't wait to try it with a fresh new print head because, like I said, I'm not getting full print on all. Uh, well, it's done now. On all of the print heads, I'm not getting the. Uh, full print out so here here you can see nice dense blacks in here and again this is dry this is UV dried as it prints um, real nice crisp let me lower this real nice crisp lines if you set the height right you will get good color output look at how nice and crisp that is so it's really dark. I did it with a lot of other colors, but again, I'm not getting yellow. So this is just a print test with only the uh, the black, magenta, and cyan. Um, and they're not full firing on all the, the prints. So it's definitely missing some. But you can't tell. With 1440, you know, you're going to get the highest resolution on here. And it looks pretty good. This is on printed on regular adhesive vinyl that I just stuck to the table. So um, if you want to know my thoughts on on this printer on the whole uv printer deal um i'll tell you so far i like it okay i like it i'm not going to go out and tell people to go out and buy it yet because um there is a, a a certain level of uh skill not skill but knowledge where you got it you, you you're not going to get much help from your distributors on these because there's a language barrier um, the files, the AcroRip comes up as Trojan viruses. I'm running this computer on uh, by itself. It's not even online. So I don't care if there's nothing on it. If there's a Trojan, I don't care. Um, but I would not install it on your regular computer, guys. I just wouldn't trust it. Um, but all in all, I like the build quality of this UFO printer. 
Um, no doubt, I do like it. And um, I like how the parts are easy to get. The dampeners, that print head, you know, all L1800 because it's an L1800 print head. The ink is easy to get in the U.S. Um, you get them, you know, in these large bottles. I got a full set, you know, of uh, five bottles. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, five bottles. It was like 150 bucks or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's the build quality is great. Um, the maintenance is, doesn't seem too bad. You leave it on, it automatically does its sucking. It's got a wet cap station, so it's always going to stay wet on the head. And so far, I've gone a couple days, two, three days without printing anything and to printing what you see right now. So, um, I think you can get really good quality out of it. You're just going to have to learn this printer. It's not a, you know, turn on and go type deal. Um, what's good about the flatbeds, you can raise and lower it, you know, I think, what is it, four or five inches. So you can print on a lot of different objects. Um, you can make jigs and just print on anything pretty much. Um, and it prints on the metal, the aluminum, easy. It was hard to get off. I tried scraping it off or wiping it off. It doesn't just wipe off. So, you know, the printer itself is, I think it's commercially grade. I, I like how it works with the table. Um, as far as the printing, I, I haven't had any sheet fed issues. Some people claim there's issues with the feeding. If there is, you just push the button. But I know you got to start with your platen all the way in. Okay. So like if you wanted to print out a box or a wood box, anything full color, you just throw it on there, make a template, throw it on there, and you could print on it. So all in all, for the price of this printer, you can't beat it for a UV printer anywhere. You can't. But you're just going to have to know you're going to have to acquire a little bit of skill and patience, you know, watching videos. They send you all the files you need, videos. Uh, there's not many videos online, so I'll try to do as much as I can. So like I told you in the beginning, I used this and I pulled ink from every dampener and the only one that wasn't working was the second white, number three from the right. So I was able to pull white from the other one and all the other colors, except I'm not getting a yellow print out of the print head. So I'm gonna order a new print head and I'm gonna order a new dampener for the other white and I'm gonna start from scratch. And I'm telling you, I think the quality of print is gonna be pretty good for this. Um, that was 1440, so it took, a, you know, like I said, over eight minutes total. Um, but you could print 720, 360. I mean, you could go down, guys. You don't have to print that high for a lot of stuff. Um, that has a really, really high gradient. And it, it you could tell, look at that, print pretty nice, pretty crisp. So all in all, I'm, I'm happy with this thing. I did not purchase this, so um, I, I just wanted to get it going. I just want to, after you see the box and the ink and the pictures that you saw, I'll show them again. This thing was in terrible shape, guys. It was just doused with ink everywhere, all over the control board, ink everywhere on the belts, on the uh, encoding strip. I had to adjust the belts, all the linkage here. The whole cap station had to get all readjusted. It was a nightmare and full of ink. So I'm pretty proud that I got to this point. And again, I want to thank Waldo for giving me the opportunity to uh, see what we can get this thing going. And I think it has a promising future as far as the dense print. You just got to learn how to adjust your profiles and your set settings for contrast and brightness. So anyways, I digress. Um, I'm going to end this video. And I'm going to say so far, I have positive feeling about this UFO printer. And um, I look forward to doing more videos on this printer because I think a lot of you guys would really like to have a really budget-friendly uh, UV flatbed printer that could print on almost anything, guys. So, um, yeah, I'm almost interested in getting one for t-shirts because if it works this crisp on here, I, I have confidence. So, as I do more videos, just keep an eye on it. And if you have questions about it, put them in the, the comments for sure. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, guys. Hit that notification bell. Subscribe if you haven't. And again... Thanks for watching my videos. I appreciate everybody. Um, I wouldn't be doing these videos if I didn't get people to interact with. And all I can say is thank you, everybody. And also, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there that watch my channel. So have a great day. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye.